Hey students, it's Miss Tarleton with the Bible lesson, and in today's Bible lesson, we are going to talk about the first missionary journey of Paul. And so we're all familiar with Paul, um, but today we're actually going to talk about the, the part in the Bible where he gets his name of Paul. We're going to hear that story. And so we're going to be working through um, the series of Paul, the Life of Paul Bible series. And so our, our next few lessons are going to span Acts 13, 14, and 15. So to give a little bit of background, um, at this point in the story, we have Saul, Barnabas, and John Mark. And as you can see, they're on a boat and they're getting ready to set sail on their first missionary journey together. Um, they are setting sail on the Mediterranean Sea. And if you remember from some of our biblical geography, the Mediterranean Sea is huge. It is huge. So in that picture that I just showed you, they are setting sail from Seleucia. And they're going to sail towards the island of Cyprus right here. Now you see I have two different dots on Cyprus. They're going to go from the red dot at Seleucia to the green dot of Salamis, which is on the east coast of Cyprus. Well, when they get to Salamis, uh, they immediately embark on sharing, um, sharing Jesus with the local leaders at the synagogue, the local Jewish leaders. And so we hear, um, we hear that they share about Jesus with the synagogue, and this is amazing. So missionaries, as we know, are people that go and spread the gospel. And so that's what they're doing. They're going and they're sharing about Jesus with others. And they start in Salamis by sharing at that synagogue. And they journey across the island of Cyprus towards the west coast, and that was the other dot that I showed you. And they're gonna end up in a location of Paphos. They're gonna end up in Paphos. We're gonna see some really cool things happen in our lesson today in Paphos specifically. So, here we have another Bible card, and we have Saul and Barnabas pictured here, and they'd been in Paphos for some time at this particular portion of our story, when the governor, Sergius Paulus, hears that they're in town, and he invites them over, because he's curious. He's curious about these strangers that traveled all the way over to Cyprus, and then crossed the entire island over to his town of Paphos, and so he invites them to his house. So Saul and Barnabas go to see the Roman governor, Sergius Paulus, and they're sharing. They're sharing about Jesus. They're sharing about his miracles and his travels, and the governor is getting excited. He's, he's intrigued. He's intrigued about this Jesus character. Well, there is a man in Sergius Paulus's house uh, by the name of Eliamus, and Eliamus was a magician. He was a sorcerer. He was not a good dude, and in fact... He professed himself and he, he acted as a false prophet, filling the governor's head with lies. He was not a good dude at all. And he had been trying to influence the governor to, to pull the wool over his eyes, to be deceitful. And those aren't things that we're supposed to do, are they? So you have Saul and Barnabas in the governor's house. And then you have this magician, Eliamus. Um, and he has had enough of listening to them talk about Jesus. And so he interrupts and he says, don't believe them. Don't believe them, governor. Don't believe them, governor. What they're saying is nonsense. Well, we, we know that what they're saying isn't nonsense. But this man, this Eliamus, is being deceitful because he doesn't want them to know, he doesn't want the governor to know the good truth. And so... Saul gets filled with the Holy Spirit. He gets filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes upon him and he speaks. He rebukes so harshly. He looks right at the guy. He looks him in the eyes. He looks at Eliamus in the eyes. And he says this. And I'm going to try my best rebuke voice. <clears throat> you son of the devil, full of every sort of trickery and enemy of all goodness, will you ever stop twisting the truth of the Lord? Because you have tried to turn people away from him, you will be blind for a time and not able to see the sunlight. And scarcely had these words left Saul's lips, but Eliamus is blinded. And he goes, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see. He's overtaken by mist and darkness. He can't see. He can't see. And, and he's grasping around for somebody to take his hand and to lead him so he doesn't stumble into things. Well, the governor, the governor who was interested about these strangers that had traveled to his, to, to Cyprus, the governor instantly believes 
you know, he had seen this man, Saul, who had the Holy Spirit come upon him. And it's not like a cartoonish, like he, you know, Saul grew 12 sizes and started glowing and shooting lasers out of his hand. No, but the Holy Spirit came upon him and he spoke and a miracle happened. And so the governor witnesses all of this and instantly he believes, he believes in God and he believes that Jesus is the son of God. And so he has this belief come upon him in his heart. Well, he's not the only one that has something happen on the inside to him. Saul has something happen to him too. And so we're not exactly told how this whole process goes. Um, but from now on, from this moment, from this moment, Acts 13 on, the Bible calls this man that we're talking about, the one on his first journey, Paul. And Paul means little. So here he is, a little man, little in his own sight, not thinking he can do much great, but he's so mighty with the power of God. Saul's name changed from Saul to Paul. And God tells us that in heaven, all of us get new names too. So that's super exciting. So we, we see the name change happen here. Okay. So after their journey is completed on the island of Cyprus, the three missionaries take a ship back to the mainland. So here they are in Cyprus and they head back towards the mainland right there. Um, landing near a town of Perga. And here we see that John Mark has decided to leave them and return to his home in Jerusalem. We're not told why, but perhaps he got homesick. or Maybe he couldn't handle the hardships of journeying on a mission. But God hadn't called him to travel as a missionary as he had called Paul and Barnabas. And so John Mark had left them and he headed towards home. And Paul was very disappointed and he felt that John Mark had made a mistake by heading home. But later on, God allowed John Mark to correct his mistake and he became a devoted servant of the Lord and wrote the Gospel of Mark, the second book of the New Testament. Pretty cool stuff. So Paul and Barnabas went on to Antioch. Now, you're like, wait a minute, Miss Tarleton. Antioch, aren't there a couple? So this is not the Antioch in Syria where the disciples were first called Christians. But this is another city by that same name in Asia Minor. And so Paul and Barnabas, because his name is Paul now, they um, head to Antioch, and on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down for the services. After the usual readings from the law and from the prophets, the men in charge, the leaders in charge, sent this message. Brothers, if you have a word of instruction or encouragement for the people, please speak. So, at the invitation, Paul stands up and he begins to speak and preach in the Jewish synagogue. He traced the history of the people of Israel, showing how it led to the coming of the Messiah. He proved that Jesus was not only the son of David, but was also the son of God. And he told them how Jesus had died and rose again three days later. And he closed his message with these words, Brothers, listen. In this Jesus, there is a forgiveness for your sins. Everyone who trusts in him is freed from all guilt and declared righteous before God, something that the Jewish law could never do. And as Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, some Gentiles who were non-Jews approached them and they asked if they would return to speak on the next Sabbath for the Gentiles. So the following week, um, almost the whole city turned out to hear Paul preach the word of God. And the Jewish leaders, do you think they were happy? Nope. Nope. The Jewish leaders saw the crowds and they were filled with jealousy and anger that Paul was teaching uh, the good news that God had to the Gentiles. The Jews felt that the grace of God was meant only for Jewish people. And so the Jewish leaders tried everything they could to turn people away. They spoke badly about Paul and what he was preaching, and they spoke harshly about the truth of Jesus the Savior. Well, Paul and Barnabas, when they saw what the Jewish leaders were doing, they said, according to the command of God, it is necessary that the gospel be preached to you, the Jews, first. But we see that you refuse to believe in Jesus, the Messiah. And so now we are turning to the Gentiles who were eager to hear this wonderful message. God has told us to take the light of salvation to the Gentiles, even in the farthest places of the world. Well, when the Gentiles heard this, they were very glad. Afterward, many of them had come to believe in Jesus and the word of the Lord was spread all throughout that region. But the Jewish leaders, stirred up with a bitter feeling towards Paul and Barnabas and the city officials, the Jewish leaders and the city officials, I should say, began to persecute the two. So we'll take up our next lesson with some more of Paul's missionary journey. Will you pray with me? 
God, I thank you so much for these students. I thank you for um, their hearts. And God, I just pray that you would bless them this day. Lord, that you would give them focus, you would give them clarity, and that, God, your word would be revealed true to them every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me for Bible Time, and I will see you soon. Bye!